Hello. Thanks for joining today. Um, so last Friday, we did a sequence on creating more mobility through the hip joint. Um, one of the students had a question about how she could um, come into Lotus more easily and then lie down and keep her knees from popping up. Um, so you can view that video from last Friday, um, April 5th. And today we're going to um, continue to work kind of in that region, um, doing some strengthening work for the, the psoas and the adductors, um, and then we'll, we'll work again on rotation of the hip joint. Um, it's cold in Portland today, so I'm going to keep my socks on <laughs> for the first thing that we're going to do. And you actually might want your socks on also um, so that your feet can slide. And if you don't have a wooden floor to practice with, um, carpet is probably fine, or you can lay down a blanket. So I'm just going to switch my camera and see you in a second. OK, so lie down on your mat, and if you're using that, um, and lie down so that your hips are just at the end of it, and um, you have space to fully extend your legs forward. <clears throat> So just start by lying down. You can bring your knees into your chest and interlace your hands around your thighs. Make sure my microphone is up. Sorry, guys. Hold on. All right. So hopefully you can hear me. <clears throat> All right. So lying down on your back. Um, start to take some deep breaths into your back and relax through the pelvis, relax through your hips. And then you can keep your left leg in and extend the right leg out. <clears throat> and again, use your arm strength more than your leg to pull your leg in. Relax as much as you can around the inner hip. I like to think about breathing here into the compression in my waist. You can kind of use it as an internal massage to your organs. And then extend your left leg up towards the ceiling. You can release your hands behind your thigh. And you can start to push your leg a little bit forwards into your hands. Use your hands to pull back and make circles with your ankle in one direction. And then switch directions. And then you can slide your um, right foot up so your right knee is bent and bring your left um, ankle just above your ankle to the right knee so you make a figure four. This could be enough. You could stay right here. Um, you can also bring the legs in closer to your body and interlace your hands behind your right thigh and use your arms just to pull the leg in. And then if you're pretty limber, um, bend your left elbow and use your elbow to push forwards into your left knee as your hands pull the right leg in. <clears throat> and especially if your legs are lifted up, you just want to feel that you're, um, there's a tendency to kind of shorten the right side of the waist here. So um, feel that both sides of your spine are long. And then go ahead and extend your left leg forwards, and you can bring your hands in around your right shin. <clears throat> and again, use your arms more than your leg, just trying to relax your leg, relax your right lower back. And breathe into the right side of your belly. Mm 
and then extend your um, right heel towards the ceiling and interlace your hands behind the right thigh. And just resist a little bit your palms to your thigh. And make circles with your ankle in one direction. And then switch directions. And then you can bend your left knee and place your right ankle on the left knee. And if you wish, draw the legs in close to your body and interlace your hands behind the left thigh. You may notice that one hip is a lot tighter than the other. Again, find that kind of even length and going on either side of the spine. And just then go ahead and keep both of your legs forward. And you can do what are called heel rocks here. So try and really just relax your body. And you can use your heels to rock um, your skeleton. So it'll travel all the way up through your spine and it'll make your head kind of bob. <clears throat> just get a sense that your body is connected here. And then the next time your heels push forward stay and notice how um, if you push the heels forwards it kind of drops the low back a little bit but if you pull the heels towards your body um, it'll kind of roll your weight further towards the coccyx so there's a little more of an arch in the low back so push your heels forwards and see if you can actually let that engagement in your legs drop the low back um, so that it's not so much that you're contracting the abdominal wall, but you're engaging the legs in such a way that the lower spine lengthens. And then you're going to try and keep that engagement and um, on an inhale, slide your feet up towards your bottom. And then as you exhale, push into the heels and slide the feet forwards. So let's do that um, one more time. Now, as you slide your heels forwards and back, link your breath, and really feel your feet as they travel on the floor. And as you pull the feet up, you can probably feel more engagement towards the hamstrings. And then as you push the feet forwards again, see if you can let it um, kind of sequence into an elongation of the torso. I think that was four. Let's do one more. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to do the same thing, but take the feet a little bit wider, more um, towards the width of the mat. And so as you inhale, draw the feet towards the body, and as you exhale, push the feet forwards. And um, you might be able to see my tummy right now, but <clears throat> what we're trying to do is keep kind of a softness through the front wall of the abdomen and use more of this leg into uh, body connection you might feel from the inner thighs. So let's do one, two more. Mm -hmm. and let's do inhale, draw the soles of the feet up, and then as you exhale, take them all the way back down. Now we're going to try that um, with a turnout. So you can bring your heels towards each other and turn the toes out. And then as you inhale, um, draw the feet up. And as you exhale, push the feet forwards. So with the toes turned out, it's a little bit more of a natural thing to extend the spine. So again, we want to find that strong push through the outer feet. 
and connect to the outer feet as you draw them in. I like to keep my hands to my lower belly just as a reminder um, to try and stay soft. Two more here. Okay, and then next time you inhale, you're going to do the same thing. Turn out, draw the knees in. When you come to the top, bring your feet flat to the floor so that the knees are towards the ceiling. And then exhale and push the legs forwards with the knees straight. So turn the toes out. And as you inhale, slide the outer feet and the knees bend out to the sides. And then at the top, rotate inwards. And as you exhale, lengthen the legs, push the feet forwards. And three more times. As you inhale, there's an external rotation to bring the legs all the way up. And then as you exhale, you find the internal rotation and push through the feet and lengthen your legs forwards. Inhaling and exhaling. Let's do one more time. And then we'll continue the same thing, but reverse the order. So as you inhale, pull the feet up, and then externally rotate and exhale, push the feet forwards. The toes turn up, and inhale, draw them towards your body. And then the toes turn out, and exhale and push them forwards. Three more times like that. And again, we're, we're looking for a way to engage the legs so that the lower spine um, is actually just really supported feeling. It's not being thrust up towards the ceiling, and you're also not clamping down and gluing it onto your mat. <clears throat> Let's do one more. So now let's alternate. Um, slide your right heel in. And then exhale, push the right foot forwards and slide the left heel in. And continue like that, like Nordic track on the floor. Now notice here um, that both legs are doing the opposite. As one leg is doing one thing, the other is doing the other thing. And um, one foot's going to be pushing while the other one is pulling. And I want you to feel that you're not rolling to the inner or the outer foot on either way. And this is going to require you to find some stability, find your midline through your pelvis. Just imagine your feet on their right and their left tracks. And then go ahead and bring both your feet up, your knees to the center. And if that felt like it was a good challenge, you can continue, maybe for another five on each side. And if you want a little bit more, lift your left leg so that it's 90 degrees from the floor. And then uh, just take the right leg by itself. And here, we're really finding a strong push um, through the inner foot and a strong pull through the heel. And that's going to help you to stabilize. And then just switch sides. So uh, if that's what you're doing, take the right foot up. And then slide forwards with the left foot. You're going to want to <clears throat> refrain from rolling too much to the right side pelvis. Really find that push through the left side. Keep the left uh, inner hip connecting to your spine. All right, so then <clears throat> you can draw both feet up, both knees up towards the ceiling. And then we'll just slide um, the right foot forwards. And then when it's all the way long, on your inhale, you're going to keep the foot pointed and lift it all the way up towards the ceiling. And then exhale and set it down. So slide your left foot forwards, the toes point. And then inhale, lift the left leg up. And exhale and set it down. Let's do two more so that they're slow. Okay, so 
push your left foot down as you slide the right foot forward. So you stabilize on the left side and inhale and then exhale. And then stabilize your right side. Inhale, push that left foot forwards and then all the way up and then set it down. So now we're going to pick up the pace a bit and as you move, um, stabilize the leg that's staying still. Okay? So um, here we go. Slide the right foot forwards, inhale as you set the right foot down, slide the left foot forwards. So we're just going to alternate. And step down into the leg that's staying still. And meanwhile, really point the toe of the leg that's moving. Reach it forwards and then reach it up towards the ceiling. Let's do one more on your side. Good. All right. So, let's <clears throat> move my mat a little bit more into the center of the frame. And I think I can take off my socks. So um, lie down on your back again. <coughs> or maybe you're still there. But we're going to lie on the back with the knees bent. And um, the feet are about parallel. And if you extend your arms, you can touch the backs of your heels with your fingertips. Now from here, you can bring your hands to your pelvis and just start to take some really gentle posterior and anterior tilts. And your sacrum will stay on the ground, but you're just going to um, feel the lower back kind of arching away from the floor and then uh, reaching down into the floor. And again, what I want you to do is actually use your legs to create that motion. So as you push the feet down and forwards, the lower back moves towards the floor. And as you pull your heels towards your bottom, um, the lower back arches away from the floor. So now, uh, go ahead and press into your feet and lift your pelvis. And I want you to feel here that you have choice around whether or not you um, pull your heels towards your body or push your feet away from your body. And that they are both supported but in different ways. Okay? And one might feel better than the other to you in your lower back. And you might need a blend of either. <laughs> so um, really engage with your feet. Push down through the inner feet and the outer feet. And keep the pelvis lifted. And if you want to continue from here, you're just going to lift your right heel up from the floor. So it's like you're putting on a high heel shoe. And then step your right heel down. And then inhale and just lift your left heel. So the toes stay down, but the heel lifts. And let's do four more on each side. So you can lift the heel. Just alternating sides. Now, similar to the last exercise we did, um, the foot that's flat on the floor is your stabilizing foot. So you're going to really ground down into the foot that's flat. And I want you to keep thinking about your legs and your torso. Um, being part of the same thing, both part of your body. And as much as possible, use your legs more than gripping in the low back. Okay. Now, after the next time you do the left heel, both heels are down, you can continue with the same thing. Or if you wish, uh, go ahead and lift your right foot completely off the floor with the knee 90 degree bend, and then step it down, and then switch sides. So again, I'm really going to focus on stabilizing the standing leg. You can also bend your elbows and let the backs of the arms help you. <clears throat> and then you can continue like this, or if you want, extend your leg all the way up towards the ceiling. Here. Taking alternate steps and pushing down into one foot and really reaching through the other. Okay. 
And then after you've done both sides, go ahead and rest your pelvis all the way down. And you can bring your knees in towards your chest, grab a hold of them, and then spread them out to the sides and just rock a little bit to either side. So here you're going to want, um, for the next thing we're doing, you're going to want <clears throat> room to the sides of your body. So I'm just going to turn on my mat. You might not need to. But I'm going to turn on my mat and squeeze in towards the wall. I think you can see. All right. So I'll show the bent knee option first. Bent knees is a little bit easier than straight legs. Um, you're going to extend your arms out like a T. And then I'd like you to squeeze your legs towards each other. Keep the knees and the ankles together. And as you inhale, bring your knees about halfway over to the right. And then keep the knees together. And as you exhale, draw them back to the center. As you inhale, take the knees halfway over to the left. You can push your left knee up into your right knee. And then as you exhale, draw them back to the center. And then if that feels um, easy, go ahead and extend your legs. And here we want to keep the legs together. And it's easy to let them kind of drift apart. So I really want you to reach through your heels, magnetize them towards each other. On an inhale, take your legs about halfway down to the right. And then as you exhale, bring them back to the center. Inhale, the legs halfway to the left. And exhale back to the center. Right. And if that's easy, then you can start to bring your legs even closer towards your hand. Um, so it might be more like almost to the floor and hover. And then exhale back in. And almost to the floor up at your hand and hover. And then exhale back in. All right. So let's do uh, two more to each side with whatever variation you're doing. Inhale to the right. And exhale back to center. And inhale to the left. Exhale to center. And once more, inhale to the right. Exhale to center. Inhale to the left. And exhale to center. Right. So again, you can have knees bent or straight. I'll show the bent knee first. <laughs> So as you inhale, you're just going to open your right knee all the way to the right. Let it come towards the floor. And then as you exhale, take your left knee on top of it so that you're now in a twist. <clears throat> and then I don't think on my video you can see my arm, but I'm going to make a big half circle and reach my left arm up and back so that I roll over onto my right side completely. Nice mobility for the shoulders. And then to come back to the center, I'm going to inhale and reach that left arm up and back and open from the upper body. And then the left knee is going to come up and then the right knee. And we'll do the other side and I'll show with legs straight. So uh, the left leg comes down to the floor and then the right leg on top of it. So you're in a twist from your low body. And then on an inhale, that right arm rotates all the way around, brings you onto the left side. Close the twist. And then on your next inhale, you open the twist back up from your upper body. And then the right leg comes up and then the left leg. And let's do um, two more to either side with that knees or straight legs. So right leg to the right. And then left leg to the right. And then inhale, circle the arm up and over. And then exhale, circle the arm up and back. The left leg up, and then the right leg up. Drop the left leg to the left, and then the right leg to the left. Spiral your arm up and over, all the way to the left side, and then reach it all the way up and back to the right. And the right leg comes up, and then the left leg. One more time, the right leg to the right, and then the left, and then the left arm over, and all the way back. Left leg up. Right leg up. Left leg down. 
and the right leg down. The right all the way over. And then all the way back. And the right leg up. And then the left leg up. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Right. So we're almost done. And um, it's going to stay lying like this for the next thing. hope you can see me. Um, so continuing with what uh, we were doing on Friday, just kind of mobilizing with the leg um, by inverting the foot. So it's pretty easy to feel if you're lying down on the floor, but if you um, lift one leg up and kind of turn the sole of your foot towards your midline, you can watch how it makes your knee go out to the side and it brings kind of an external rotation into your thigh bone. And then from there, if you were to bend your knee, um, you could really come into a shape kind of like lotus pose. So we're going to use this idea with a pose that some people call dead bug, other people call happy baby, and then some people call the welcome home pose. <laughs> But you can just grab a hold of your big toes and, um, I don't know, sorry if that was a bad joke, and then start by rotating one foot in towards your midline so that the knee comes over to the side and the other leg extends. And then you'll switch sides by taking that foot in towards your midline and the other leg extends. And I think this feels pretty good um, on my sacrum and into the hip joints. So what we're doing here is using the same principles of the exercises that we've done so far and finding a whole leg kind of experience. So as you push or pull through your outer, uh, sorry, through your big toe, through your inner foot, you can probably feel some engagement or lengthening all the way up through your inner thighs and then into the pubic bones. And as you curl the outer foot, the fourth toe in, it helps the outer hip kind of widen and um, wrap forwards. Okay. So you could continue side to side if that is pleasing to you. And otherwise, we'll um, stay in the pose. And so I like to grab the outer edges of my feet to hold the pose. And your sacrum could be off the floor a little bit. Some people like to try and drop it down. And here what I want to do is rest as much as I can around my hip joints. So my hands are kind of pulling down into my feet. And I'm trying to relax um, through my inner hip creases, relax the weight of my leg bones into my pelvic pads, relax my jaw, and just take Deep breaths all the way down into the belly. If you need more time, you can just stay right there. Otherwise, when you're ready, bring the soles of the feet in and take your hands to your knees and draw them towards each other. And then you can bring your feet back down onto the floor. <coughs> and with the knees bent and the feet about mountain with this is apart, <coughs> I'm going to start by keeping my left leg up towards the ceiling. Sorry, my left knee stays up towards the ceiling and my right knee travels towards the midline. So this is a little bit of an opposite action of what we were just doing, which was externally rotating um, the thigh bones in the pelvis, opening them out. So here, this is an internal rotation. And then I'm going to bring that right knee back to the center and take my left knee in. 
get to the center. <clears throat> right knee back up towards the ceiling. Let's do one more on either side. So the left knee comes up, and then we can push the weight of the right foot. Let that knee come down. And then the right knee comes up, and the left knee comes down. And then when you're ready, you can bring both of your knees back into your chest. We'll just finish <clears throat> in a standing forward fold. Um, so you can take your feet wider than your hips and just rest down, bend your knees as much as you need. And just like we've been doing um, all morning so far, just notice how the weight is in your feet and let your weight reach down through your feet even as much as you can. Really connect to the floor. And feel your outer feet and your big toes and your heels. Reach them through your mat. And try and relax now through your spine. Relax your torso. When you're ready, bend the knees and inhale all the way up. And switch your arms up, take a deep breath in, and release the arms all the way down. Thanks for joining me. Um, hope you have a really great day.